Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I'm Brad, here with Doug. Hey. I just played through Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, mm-hmm. which is a game I was weirdly looking forward to for just being this 2D game. It kind of came out of nowhere when it was announced. Yeah. But I was always a huge fan of Prince of Persia from like I Sands didn't... of Time on. I had I had no idea until until the trailer came out. You're like, I am so pumped for Prince of Persia. I was like, you, have, <laughs> we have never talked about Prince of Persia. We haven't. I think it's one of those where it's like I, maybe huge fans. I I really liked the series. Like I liked that trilogy. Yeah. They put out another just self titled Prince of Persia game towards the later end of like the 360 era. That is just yeah. fantastic. I played through that maybe two or three times. I don't really replay mm-hmm. games that much. So I was really excited to see more Prince of Persia. This one uh, a little different because we went back to a 2D. Mm-hmm. metroidvania style game here so a little bit different than what we'd seen from prince of persia in the last 20 ish years yeah and you don't play as the prince which is also a weird thing i didn't know that that's that's interesting i had no idea <laughs> so normally normally you play as the prince of persia and you're going off yeah. and doing whatever um in this one though the prince is kidnapped mm-hmm and taken to this mysterious mountain, and you are one of the, you are Sargon, one of the immortals of Persia who protect Persia and who fight for Persia. And basically, mm-hmm. you all go into this like weird, crazy, kind of cursed, kind of funky uh, mountain to go rescue him. Mm-hmm. So very different than what you see in any other Prince of Persia game, right off the bat. Do you, I mean, do you like that? Is there anything that like ties it to being Prince of Persia? That I mean, besides like Middle Eastern setting, obviously, but like besides that, is there anything that really makes it Prince of Persia? The setting is there. The whole thing with Prince of Persia, again, at least in like the past 20 years, I know there's some stuff before that that I don't have any sure. familiarity with, but there's like weird time manipulation and all that kind of things. Mm. I mean, the sands of time are kind of the big thing where it's like, okay, you can go back in time, you can go forward in time. That's all there. So once you get into this mountain that basically functions as your entire exploring area, it's just this huge mm. mountain that's like this slightly different dimensional thing that you're brought into. Very, very weird stuff going on inside there. And that's where it kind of gets into some of that similar lore of like, okay, like here's what's going on with the prince, here's what's going on with the time, these different pieces are all working together. So mm-hmm. it's it's the foundation is there. Could you have called this something different? Yeah. Could it have just been yeah, okay. yeah. Sargon and the Crazy Mountain? Yeah, yes, it could have been. <laughs> sure. Obviously, you yeah. want to put the Prince of Persia branding on it to get more attention to it because I do feel like games like this are kind of a dime a dozen these days where it's just mm-hmm. they're everywhere. Um, it's a 2D Metroidvania. I mean, there's probably been 30 of those released already in 2024, and that's probably being yeah. hyper conservative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this one is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is so good. Um, it's weirdly big budget feeling. So obviously, Prince of Persia mm-hmm. is an Ubisoft game, so it's an Ubisoft game that has that. It's it's like you see somebody who's like all these indie developers, like we're going to make a 2d metro anyway. Right? And it was like, well, yeah, we're going to do that. But like, we have the budget of seven of you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> it's the same thing, but like, it's not like you can feel like just the production, val- the production values in this, in just the, the art direction that's going on here and the visuals, there's really great cutscenes in it. Um, it just feels cool. It's one of those that as you're playing it, just mm-hmm. like everything has a great look to it. Everything just has so much style going on. The art style is very cool. It just, it looks cool. It's a cool setting. It just, it is, it, it's one of those games that as you're playing it, you go, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Over and over and over yeah. again. Which you don't always see in some of these Metroidvanias become, because they've just become so commonplace. I feel like you kind of just get into the trappings of going through it, going through it, going through it. Mm-hmm. That you don't, that you didn't feel here as much as I have in other ones. Gotcha. I, I guess the question I have with it being like, a big budget metroidvania also ubisoft game does it have any of that ubisoft bloat to it uh no. just like oh that's cool <laughs> it's, well okay it's a it's a long ass game oh, okay it is yeah. substantially longer than a lot of them i think it took me like 16 or 17 hours and i by mm. no means 100 percent of this thing whereas i yeah. feel like a lot of times you know you're looking at the the 10 to sub 10 hours uh, if you're playing a metroidvania 2d game kind of like this so it definitely had a little bit bigger at no point did it feel like the collectible side quests. They're all there. There's tons of collectibles. There's side quests. There's all that stuff in there, but it never had that like, here's the marker or here's your map with 50,000 markers on it. Go have oh, fun. Yeah, you question, never got yeah. that. It's 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 very directed. Um, 
in terms of like map and that type of thing, it actually has a really cool system that I think every Metroidvania mm. ever should have. And if it does not have this, it should just be thrown in the trash right away. And that <laughs> is that you can screenshot markers. So when you go to your map, normally in a Metroidvania game, you'll just get like, you know, 10 different colors. There's a red sticker and a blue sticker and a yellow sticker and a green sticker. And you just plop them on the, oh yeah, there was something yeah. here that I want to remember. It's a green sticker. Two hours from, I'm not going to remember what that green sticker is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What yeah. this does is it actually, it's just a quick button. It's down on the D-pad. You click it, and it instantly screenshots your screen and saves it to your map. And you just go hover over that marker, and it doesn't tell you anything. It just pops up the screenshot of what it was. So it might be like there's yeah. a grapple point, and early in the game, you can't grapple. So, okay, boom, screenshot it. I go back over, and I'm like, oh, grapple. I can really quick fast travel back over there, walk over this grapple point, and get through there because I know what it is. I'm not going like... <laughs> crap was blue grapple or was green locked door it's just there for you it's such a great idea yeah and animal well especially like really really suffered from what icon do i use for what kind of thing mm -hmm. and i yeah. my icons were totally screwed up by the end it like didn't make sense or anything like that i understand it's like well that's your fault it's like yeah okay i didn't know i was gonna run to like 10 different things i'd never seen before <laughs> like I, I don't i didn't know it just made sense at the time to have this as my flame icon but like 10 let like okay now what doesn't make sense to do it yeah i'm not that that system makes like seems so so it makes so much sense i hope it's not one of those like weird like copyrighted systems um because sometimes it's because they're really good nobody else will ever be able to use this yeah actually it was, yeah yeah exactly and I'm really hoping because it, every Metro, every Metroidvania could use that. It's just, it's such a, I went back and played Metroid Zero Mission after this. And literally my first thought was like, God damn it. I'm not going to remember what this is here. I stopped at the end of this hallway and I'm not going to remember why I stopped at the end of this hallway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to talk about combat a little bit because it feels really good. The dodge in this is fantastic. It's like a little slide move. So you're like constantly sliding between enemies legs, which again, just that mm. kind of cool factor piece. Great upgrades for movement as well just as you're going through it just everything by the end of the game you just flow so steadily that it's just like boom boom mm. boom boom jump double jump it's like uh air dodge to a grapple to jump that wall climb that wall it just it feels so so good as you're going through it um and again i think that's where it takes like kind of that like okay we had three people working on this and it feels pretty cool versus like no we have like a team of people just working on this <laughs> sure. dodge for like four months so it's just that it's just that like everything is like so fine-tuned to be exactly yeah. right that it's just it's so good is it is it just like is it just not just but is it like hey it did a metro metro metroidvania formula really 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 well and that's kind of it but it also has a cool screenshot thing like that that's usually kind of because i played the it's, demo and i was like this still feels very it feels like a very very good very familiar thing that's probably a fair way to say it. i think it's one of those where it's like you've perfected is not a word that i would throw around here but like you've you've you know mastered the art of the 2d metroidvania with this okay it's the yeah. same thing that kind of metroid dread had where it's like is this earth shattering and insane and gonna blow people's minds when you play it no but is this one of the best of these things that has ever existed probably yeah no. this is probably That's one cool. of the best 2d metroidvanias out there it just it, it checks every box that you want from a game like this um and it just there's there's no there's no real letdown to it where you're like ugh but when you have to because i feel like so many of them get to like oh yeah but like you get the glide move and the glide move just it doesn't feel right and i can never judge it or yeah. oh yeah like the it's cool you get all these magic spells but like there's like really only one that's helpful the rest are all just kind of there everything has a time everything has a place everything has a use everything fits well in combat and in traversal mm. it's just it's so well made and so well designed that just it it just checks all the boxes um bosses are awesome and huge yeah. and great there's a bunch of them as you go through here they're well it's well paced you know you're constantly getting upgrades you're constantly getting one new little thing over and over and over again bosses show up at a good pace um with the map thing you never get lost it literally it's like every every qualm i have with a metroidvania game not here <laughs> and that's i think the thing that just like stood out or it's just like i have my list of things that like are an instant turn off for a metroidvania game yeah. and just not a single one of them is in this. And I think that just elevated it in my mind to being like, this is amazing. So once again, if Ubisoft's not making a AAA game, all their smaller games are incredible. Like I was just thinking like <laughs> the Trials games, yep. uh, the Rayman games, Child of Light. Yep. It's just like Ubisoft just makes so many really good small games. Yes, if you can um, just focus this, your this team. This is like the first one in a while. Yeah, this is like a yep. first one in a while too. So, um, I mean, hopefully we get more like this. I will say mm -hmm. this thing is so damn hard. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I would, again, again, like I'll, I'll, you'll, you'll make fun of me for Dark Souls. You'll like the hardest two D Metroid thing you can find. It's like it's two D. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. I can't do Souls games, but give me a hard two D game. I'm in. There were probably yeah. I think four bosses that fit that like. This, uh, I've been doing this for forty <laughs> minutes. Why can't I get it? And then she's like, "Oh, it clicked. Okay, I got it. Like, oh, yeah. I can parry that move, and then we're good." And it just—I had mm. a lot of those where it just clicks, or it's one of those where it's like, "Okay, like I got my ass kicked, got my ass kicked again." Oh, look at that! I beat phase one of the boss. Cool. Okay, now I can get through phase one without getting touched. Okay, mm. it's just that, that really good build when you're fighting a boss. That even those ones that were really pissing me off, there's only one that I had the like, I think I might be done feeling. Um, yeah, I remember that. So it was like yeah. it was it was maybe like two thirds of the way through, and I was just like, I, I I think I'm done. I don't think I can do this one. And it was yeah. like, nope. And then you get it, and it's good. Um, some of the platforming is really tough too. There's lots of big long platforming se- sections, especially towards the last probably quarter of the game. It just gets into like, mm-hmm. all right, get over here, and you're like, oh look, that's like two inches on the map. That's not very far away. And that's like, oh, but it is like up down up down up down up down over over through the cave <laughs> sure. up down up down up. And so like, okay, so. Yeah. Um, it is tough. I will say that again, it's tough. It's a little bit longer than I, than most of these are. I didn't, I was enjoying it. So I never felt the length, but I, I really like this game. I think it is easily one of the better Metroidvania games I've played ever. If for sure, not recently, probably outside of like Metroid and Castlevania, it might be one of the better ones out there. (laughs) I like that. You always play the top tier Metroidvania games. I'm playing like the kind of like weirdo Metroidvania games. that are Like I'm very excited for Blasphemous too. I will never play the Prince of Persia game, but I'll get Blasphemous too and be like, it was fine. (laughs) Yeah. I I played like an hour and a half or two hours of Blasphemous one. I was like, this is okay. Moving on. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I'll I'll play, I'll play a crunchy, crunchy weirdo Metroidvania, but I'm not going to play like the top tier Metroid dreams or anything like that. Cause, yeah, yeah, just for whatever reason. It's, they're, they're too good. They're too good. You don't want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't. Too I, perfect. I, I... <laughs> you need, you yeah. need your issue in there. <laughs> I do. All right. Well, we are Workforce Gaming. Uh, leave a comment below. Subscribe to our channel. There's a link to support us on coffee as well. We'll see you later. Bye.